Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. And today you have tuned into my video series called Way Out Wednesdays or the acronym of WOW. And I'm just going to tell you that my spirit guides, whom I channel, I'm about 60% them and 40% me, are on a bent. They're on a bit of a, of a, of a bent. They're on a bender. <laughs> they're on a teaching bender. That's what they're on. Today, we're going to be talking about shadow work. Now, before you before you turn off the video, I wouldn't do that if I were you, because this is going to help you more than anything else in your life. Okay, that's a big statement. That is a big statement that I personally, the 40% of this conversation, I'm not sure I want to live up to, but let's just see at the end what you think and you can leave your comments below and 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 just let me know how this helped you and if you think this is going to be something really big or really helpful in your life okay let's let's start off like this okay you and i both know if we're being honest 98% of you that there's some part of your house that is messy it could be that you have a junk drawer. Don't we all have a junk drawer? Why do we have a junk drawer? I don't know. I know some of you organize your junk drawer, but you still have a junk drawer. It's junk. It's stuff you don't know what else to do with. You don't want to give it away. You don't want to let it go, but you can't, you know, you can't decide what to do with it. Now, others of us have junk rooms, right? The kids moved out or the house is too big or whatever. We have a whole room where we're just storing things. Some of us have closets where we just open the door, shove it in, close the door, go on about our day, right? So we have these hidden areas in our lives where we put our junk. Some of us, especially for some reason down here in the South, we have storage units that are full of junk. And then sometimes that gets so full of junk that, that you have to go out and get another storage unit to put your junk in. It can start out with all the best intentions. Of course, everything starts out with the best intentions. We don't start out thinking, well, this is going to be cluttering up my life and my emotional energy for the next 20 years. We don't think like that. That would be silly. We have the best intention. We have the best aspiration for this junk because we're still holding on to it. If it was really junk, we would have already sold it at the yard sale, given it away at the rummage sale for the charity or thrown it in the trash. It's not junk. It's just stuff we don't know what to do with. So that's an important thing to understand right off the bat. If you go about this business of dealing with this you, in a way that you are judgmental, in a way that you say, golly, Susan, why do you have this stuff in this drawer? Why can't you clean this closet out? Come on, girl. You know, what's wrong with you? If you go about it like that, you're not going to be successful. Honestly, that's the reason why you still got the junk in the closet or the drawer or the storage unit or the basement or the attic. Because when you look at it, you don't know what to do with it, number one. And number two, you get mad at yourself. That is not energy that is expansive or even, honestly, problem solving. Now, on occasion, you might open that drawer, closet, attic, basement, storage unit and attempt to clean it out. And you may, you may do a little bit, you may do what you're pretty happy with, but in the end result, there's still stuff in there that you don't know what to do with. Now, what does this have to do with shadow work? What does this have to do with raising my vibration or having my best life ev ever and actually living my dreams? Well, it has everything to do with those things because as above, so below. 
Below is your junk drawer. Above is your shadow work. So in the physical is where we also store things that hold us back, keep us down, keep us in place, keep us from venturing out and getting hurt, right? If I create this prison of myself, of this cluttered house, then I don't invite anybody over and then I can't be hurt because I don't have any relationships. You created a velvet prison. Another way to look at it is, well, I have all this stuff in my closet that I just don't want to deal with. I don't have time to deal with it. I don't want to deal with it. I'm not going to deal with it. Okay, fine. That's also a velvet prison because I promise you, whatever's in that closet is the key, (laughs) literally the key to getting you to the place you're trying to go. And you wonder, why am I being held back? Why can't I get traction? Why can't I get this done? Why can't I be the person I thought I was going to be? Or why can't I get out of this relationship? Or why can't I get these people in my life to treat me better? I mean, the list goes on. Well, I hate to tell you, but it has a lot to do with what's in your darn junk drawer. Right? So we're going to, some things that you can do. Never mind. I'm channeling this. They want me to move to something else. Okay. So when we go into the shadow side, we've talked about the junk drawer. Now let's talk a little bit because this is actually connected. In that closet, there's, there's pictures from broken relationships, right? There's a photo album in there that has a lot of pain in it. Perhaps someone that's now crossed over is in that photo album. Perhaps there's something in that closet, like a degree, a, a, a certificate, a diploma, a degree that didn't turn out the way you wanted to, wanted it to, or it didn't, or you didn't use it at all. And you have judgment. You're judging yourself about that. So you don't want to see it. You don't want to deal with it. It didn't work out the way I wanted it to. Whether it was my fault or somebody else's fault doesn't matter. It's a broken dream. So we're really going to talk about broken dreams because this is what gets stored in the physical closet, but it also gets stored in the emotional closet. And both of them can be debilitating. The non-physical, your subconscious, controls a lot of what you think about. It controls your emotions. It controls whether or not you put that resume in for that new position, whether you leave this bad relationship, bad job, whether you put that boundary down with that family member, whether you start to take care of yourself. If you've got, now, I swear to God, they want to say junk in your trunk. I swear to God, y'all, I can be so serious channeling this stuff. And then they throw something. If you got junk in your trunk, I don't know who these spirit guides are. I really don't. Maybe, maybe I should do a better job of vetting. But anyway, if you have junk in your trunk, then you got to deal with it. If you don't deal with it, it's just going to continue holding you back. And you want to know what else? You're going to carry it into your next life, right? Most of us, let's be honest, don't want to even come back. We're hoping to get a ticket out of this place. We don't want to come back, right? So I'm not saying that you have to come back. And I'm certainly not saying that if you don't finish your homework here on earth as a human, that you have to come back. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that when you cross over and you see how beautiful, intrinsic, connected, magical our lives here and why it all happened when you have the ability to look at it and say, oh my God, I understand what Bob was trying to teach me. Jesus Christ, I was so dense. I didn't get it. I just didn't get it. Give me another chance, coach. Send me back in. Make Bob twice as bad. 
I'm going to get it this time. I'm going to get it this time because now I know my soul has imprinted this lesson. So even though I'm going to forget, I'm going to have amnesia. I know that I've imprinted this lesson on my soul. When I get down there, I'm going to deal with Bob. <laughs> and you actually ordered up twice as bad, Bob, <laughs> you know? No, um, that's how it works. We get over there and we have all the test answers and we can see how close we were to getting, to figuring it out, to acing that lesson, to completing that lesson, to learning that lesson. And that expands your soul. To be honest with you, the lessons expand your soul. It's the journey, not the destination. However, we often re-up. We often sign back up for another lifetime because we want to come back. We want to come back. There's this sense of wanting to come back and help our you know, other soul members, our soul tribe, our soul family members that are reincarnating. So if you cross over and you say, wow, wow, I unlocked, I unlocked the lock around this lesson and then my soul expanded to new lessons and I feel complete. I feel complete with my human incarnation. I'm ready for a new experience, right? There's the difference right there. There's the difference. Do you feel complete? If you cross over and you've got grudges and hurts and you've let yourself down or you're mad at yourself or you got broken dreams in your shadow, in your, in your energetic sacred space, that is your equivalent of the junk drawer, if it's still littered with harms and wounds and broken promises and self-criticism, that's heavy. That's heavy, heavy energy. And you're going to want more than likely to lift it to disseminate it, to heal it before you stop incarnating. Even if you do a lot of healing and you roll your sleeves up and you say, all right, let's do this. You know, I'm, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of feeling broke down. I'm tired of feeling depressed and sad. I'm tired of feeling angry. I'm tired of not looking, of not seeing. I'm going to get busy. And let's say you you take the things from this video and you put them in to action and then things start going better for you. You're happier. You're lighter. You're achieving some of the dreams that you've wanted to achieve. You're certainly on the road to achieving them. Let's say you do all of that and you cross over. You know, is your ticket punched so you don't have to come back to earth? Sure. I mean, it's up to you anyway. Honestly, it really is. But when you get there, you're going to have a sense of fullness and completion. And you, you can decide much more. It, you can decide in a way that's more beneficial to your soul rather than I've got a mess that I still need to clean up. I've got this heavy energy that I'm pulling and dragging with me through life after life after life. And I'm just, you know, I want to go down there and clean it up. But if it's, if it's mostly on your side of the fence anyway, all you can do is fix your side of the fence. This isn't about fixing anybody else. Let me just be very clear about this. Let's, let's say it all together. This is about fixing me. <laughs> this isn't about fixing my kids, my spouse, my parents, my workplace, my friend. It's got nothing to do with them. Honey, those are distractions. You're using those to distract yourself from working on 
your own emotional junk drawer. I'm not judging you. I do the same thing. I'm just pointing out the obvious, okay? So when you cross over, it's about your energy. Your It's just all about you. It's not about anybody else. So how do you feel about your incarnation, about your soul, right? You feel light. You feel free. Do you feel complete? I would argue, because if you watch me, you know that I like to argue with my guides anyway, that this is something we all want to feel. We do want to feel free, unburdened, complete. So how do we get there? So here's some steps that you can take to start working with this energy. Now, really and truly, you can do this in the physical. You can go to the closet where the stuff is that we don't want to think about, that we don't know what to do with. It's really, really, it comes down to that, doesn't it? If if we knew what to do with it, we would have already done it. We don't know what to do with it. Is the photo album, is that something that I should keep? Is it something I should give to a sibling? What do I do with that? It's got pictures of my ex in it. It has pictures of someone that I've lost in it that I don't want to, I just don't want to look at those pictures. It's too painful. It causes me to be sad. I get stuck in the sad energy and then I don't know how to let go. Okay, right. This is why we're doing this video. This is why we're talking about this. There's stuff in the physical world that is holding you back. And it basically has a counterpart in the energetic world. So working on it in the physical world can be very helpful. It can release a lot of the energy in the non-physical part of this equation. So you can get some help, they're saying. You can, you, there's lots of ways. I'm going to give you a few ways to do this. You can get some help. You can, you can hire somebody who works, who, who does this work, a declutterer, an organizer. Now, what's great about these people is they work with people like this all the time. They understand how important this Chotsky is. That's broken. It's broke, y'all. Let's just call it what it is. But it was really important to you. It symbolized something in your life. And now that it's broken, it can't be out in, in the open, but you can't also force yourself to give it away. They know how to help you work through this. A lot of this is psychology. A lot of this is simply working through the psychology of letting go of things. So you can also tune into some videos on YouTube, how to declutter, how to deal with emotional clutter, emotional physical clutter. There's a world of experts and help out there for you. Find it, use it. This is completely different than opening the door and saying, Susan, my God, you've got to do something about this. What is wrong with you, right? Instead, you're opening the door and you're saying, okay, I'm admitting, I'm validating that there are things here that I don't know what to do with. And I'm going to get some help so that I can understand better how to go through these things because I understand that there's some emotional triggers in here. There's some real issues in this closet, in this storage space, whatever, in this physical junk space. And I understand that it's not going to be helpful for me to get trapped going down memory lane. It's just, it's, I'm not, I don't want to do that or I'm not ready to do that. So you bring in a friend, even a friend who can, who's not emotionally attached. And the difference is the friend says, oh, your grandmother gave you this doll. Um, her eye is missing and she's got some brown stains on it that suspiciously don't look like chocolate ice cream. So 
I'm not even going to smell it, but I'm pretty sure this is something that maybe we should put in the consider to let go pile, right? Because they're not emotional. They're not attached to it. They don't understand that this doll really encapsulates for you a lot of emotional tenderness, a lot of emotional support when you needed it the absolute most. So you put it in to, you know, to be determined pile. And then you put something else in the, you know what, I thought this was important to me. It was a vase that I picked up on a trip and it was a really great trip. And, and now it's broken or now it's dusty. And I don't, I just don't feel the same way about it. So, you know what, I'm going to put this in the giveaway pile. It's almost like having somebody with you is like, um, they're showing me like when, don't ask me why they're using this analogy, because I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to be repelling off any cliffs. And if I am, I'm going to ask for y'all to help me to keep the guides from throwing me off a cliff. But it's almost like, you know, you're doing something that you need a safety for, you know, you need somebody to hold the rope or you're doing the flip and you have the spotter, you're lifting the weights and you have the spotter, you're learning something new and you have the teacher. So having somebody with you is going to make all the difference in the world because they're going to be there. They're going to be your neutral barometer. They're neutral. They don't care about any of this stuff. Therefore, they can mirror to you what neutrality looks like. And that's something you've never been able to do. You've never been able to be neutral about the closet or the junk because it's highly charged. It's very emotional. So of course you can't be neutral. There's no way you could be neutral. This is the story of your life in this junk drawer, junk box, attic, basement, storage facility. The story of your life, the broken parts. Guess what? The parts we're thrilled with are on the mantle. The parts we're thrilled with are on the shelf, on the wall. Those were the things we thought were successes. They're out for everybody to see. The broken parts are in that damn closet. That's why the door's closed. That's why we don't go there. Same thing in your shadow. Same thing in your energetic closet. Exactly the same thing because there's an energetic version and a physical version. That's why working on the physical can release the energetic. And that's why when we get into our awakening and our ascension and we do all this energetic work, we're just clearing our chakras, we're plumbing our pipes, we're roto rootering, you know, our crown chakra, we're getting it done. But then we get kind of stopped. We don't, we can't quite get where we're supposed to get. We keep getting drug back or we keep tripping over something. And in our physical life, we're not as, we're not feeling as free, open and, and ascending as we are in our energetic life. Well, that's because you got the closet over here, the stuff full of broken dreams and bad memories that are physical. So you really need to kind of balance this out. But the guides are saying, start with the physical. So you bring a friend, you hire a declutterer. Um, you know, if you have to do it on your own, you have to do it on your own. However, that is a lesson. Let me just be honest with you. If you are a loner and you do things by yourself and you prefer to do things by yourself and you don't want to share all this vulnerability with somebody, that's an indication that it's that's sort of an extreme. I mean, honestly, when we double down on something like that, spirit is going to send you a lesson. I promise you, if you hold on to something really tight and you say, I'm never going to do that. Oh my God. Did I ever learn that lesson for the love of God? Y'all never tell spirit, which means never say out loud. I'll never do that. 
I'll never date again. I'll never be in a relationship again. I'll never loan my car out again. I'll never uh, try to go into this career again. Oh my God, that you're just you're just piling the lessons up because when you say never, that pretty much guarantees you you're going to have a lesson around what does the word never mean? You know, like you're in school and they say, please write a thousand word essay on why never should never be said. Okay. So if you're doing this alone, go ahead. But please know that if I were you, I would also at the same time to sort of throw spirit off their game, I would do something to bring people into my life. I would go to a community center. Um, I would join a class. I would go down. Uh, if you live in a, you know, like a community, I would go down to the community pool and just read a book just so you could be around people. Go to the, the coffee shop and just be around people. You're showing spirit. I'm making an effort. I'm making an effort to expand I'm making an effort to be around people. I would prefer to go through the broken dreams of my life by myself, thank you, but I will make an effort to go to lunch with a friend or go to that holiday party or go to that, you know, uh, birthday party. I'll make an effort. Well, that's all they want. They don't want you to, you know, run the marathon and get the gold medal. They just want you to make an effort. So simply adding, you know, around that thing that you said, I'll never do this again, or I'll never, whatever you use the word never in, go back and just do a little extra work. Soften that never, right? Um, take it from me. Take it from a person who said never a lot and uh, learned the lesson the hard way, okay? So if you're doing this on your own, you understand. now. You might say, Susan, I don't have the money. I don't know anybody. Hey, you know what? You talking to a pro. You are talking to the pro. I argue with my spirit guides in ways y'all can't even get to yet. So don't even argue with me, okay? Figure it out. Go ask a friend. Go knock on the door of your neighbor in your apartment complex that you've seen on occasion and just say, hey, I just want to introduce myself. I live over there. My name is XYZ, you know, just to, you know, for safety's sake. And then say, nice to meet you and walk away. What did you do? Made an effort. Maybe the next time you see that person, they strike up a conversation. Maybe this is actually a really nice person as someone who would be a fantastic ally, a fantastic friend, and even better, somebody who loves to declutter, who, who lives to declutter and she can come or he could come to your house, your apartment and really help you see neutrality, neutrality. Okay, honey, I know you think that this is like the most important thing in the world, but let's talk about it. It's got a chocolate stain on it. We both know it's not chocolate. Can we let it go? Okay, thank you. Now, if it's got a chocolate stain on it and a missing eye and the seam is ripped, but yet you're thinking that's going in the casket with me. <laughs> you can't let go of it, right? You're thinking I'm taking that sucker across the veil. Then that neutral person is going to be very grounded and they're going to say, okay, how about we go to the kitchen and get some dish soap and soak this thing for a little bit? How about at least we take care of it? And then since it's so important to you, now this is important. I want you to pay attention. Since this is so important to you and you can't let go of it, here's the kicker. But yet you've put it in the closet for the last 30 years. Let's take it out of the closet. Let's put it right here where you're going to see it every day because it's important to you. Of course, after we get the chocolate stain off of it, it's important to you, right? It, you're telling me it's important to you. Remember, this person is neutral. So let's put it where you see it every day. Let me tell you what. You want to deal with something? Put it in front of you every day. Get it out of that closet. Take one thing out of that closet every week and put it where you see it every day. It'll either be in the dumpster 
<laughs> or you will give it away or you'll find a home for it. You'll all of a sudden know what to do with it or you'll frame it and put it on the wall or it'll go on the mantle next to the important things. Maybe you're ready to honor. Maybe you're ready to honor what your grandmother meant to you, but also honor the reason why this was locked away in the closet for 30 years. Do you understand why does, how does that happen? How do I love this thing and I don't want to let it go, but yet it's locked in the closet for 30 years? Well, there's probably an emotional problem because when your grandmother crossed over, you have grief, pain, sorrow, and you can't bear. You don't want to, you don't want to face it. You don't want to own it. You don't want to grieve it. So you just locked it in the closet. So bringing it out, putting it on the dresser or next to the TV is going to make you face that grief. And you might find that 30 years has really watered the grief down. And now it's just a little light sadness that you can easily work through and let it go. But when it's in the closet with the door closed, it's got energy that's a hundred times bigger because we don't know what the energy is because we didn't pull it out and deal with it. So pull something out of that closet. Maybe it's that degree diploma. Maybe it's that, maybe it's a photo. Maybe it's the book you stopped writing. Maybe it's your art supplies. Who knows what's in there? It's okay if you're gentle with yourself to pull these things out. Witness. Witness in neutrality, in gentle compassion. What does it mean? How do I feel about it? You know, this is an opportunity to go back to that person who had the dream. Let me go back to that 20-year-old version of me, to that five-year version of me, to that 35-year-old version of me that you might think was foolish enough to think that they were going to be an artist or a musician or use their degree. But instead of thinking that person was foolish, why don't we sit down and have compassion? Well, okay, you know, I really wanted this. Gosh, did I really want this? And now 30 years have passed and I'm never going to get it. I'm never going to be what I thought that I was going to be. And that hurts and that's sad. And I'm angry too. I'm really angry because maybe it wasn't my fault. Maybe it was, you know, we decided to have a family. Maybe something happened and, and I couldn't, I had to drop out of school or maybe something happened and the job didn't work out. When you can be compassionate to that version of you about that broken dream, even if it's something very small, like a stuffed animal from when you were eight, when you can be compassionate to that version of you, you're releasing all of that energy, all that heavy energy, all that woulda, coulda, shoulda is released and healed. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Allow yourself to have made the choices you made. There's no going back and complaining or, or yelling at yourself or yelling at somebody else. It doesn't work. It doesn't do anything but trap you. What happened, happened. You made the best decision you could make at the time. And you can tell yourself that. I made the best decision I could make at the time. Would I do it differently if I were doing it now? Yes, but that's 30 years of experience, 30 years of life. Even if it's five years, even if it's one year, you're a different person now than you were then. 
It simply will mire you in mud. It will mire you in inaction. It will mire you in depression and sadness and anger if you go back and be the judge, jury, and executioner to your old self. Instead, bring the olive branch. Be the peacemaker. Be compassionate. Oh, and you can talk to yourself in the third person and not feel crazy. Oh, you know, poor Susan, you really wanted this. You really, you really thought you were going to be this. And yeah, it is true that you had some experiences that you felt blocked you, that re- you really felt challenged by. And you decided you didn't want to push through those challenges. And that was your decision. And that was the best decision for you at the time. Do you want to know why it was the best decision for you at the time? Because it's the decision you made. And there's no going back and changing that. So it was the best one. Now, we are in a position where we can heal and be compassionate to that version of ourselves that didn't want to push through those challenges or felt stuck, or felt like they couldn't, they just couldn't do the thing that they wanted to do. Heal it, be compassionate, accept it, love it, and release it. And you will feel like the weight of the world has been removed from your shoulders. Weight that you didn't even know was there. You've just grown used to it. It's just been a burden that you've carried. And that burden has manifested in physical items in that closet, in that storage space, the attic, the basement, the junk drawer. That's why taking some time, getting some help, opening the door, and just take one thing out. We really set ourselves up for failure. When we decide this is the day, this is the weekend, maybe you do get help and you think, okay, everybody, some of this stuff is yours. You're going to come and we're going to go through it and we're going to get through it in one weekend. You're not going to get through it in a weekend. Two hours later, this person is sitting in the corner laughing over some toy that they found. You know, this person is sitting in the corner crying over a photograph. You're over there wondering why you've decided to keep your great-grandmother's china all this time. None of that is productive. It's not really productive. You're stuck. All of you are stuck. And meanwhile, the place is a wreck. You've opened boxes. Stuff is everywhere. So it's really, you really want to think about manage. Maybe you open the storage unit or the attic or the door and you pull out One thing for each person, one thing for me, one thing for this child, one thing for my husband, one thing for that child, one thing, not one huge thing, one thing, and you give it to them and you let them deal with it on their own. It's their problem. It's not not your problem. And then maybe you go back and do that again. And because what you're teaching yourself is, I can do this one step at a time. I don't have to overwhelm myself and I know how to do it now. If you do it with that one item where you take it out and you say, okay, I'm going to leave it right in front of me. I'm going to, I'm just going to go, you know, toe to toe with this thing. I'm going to see what it's got over me. I'm going to see what kind of power it has over me. I'm going to come to terms with it. I'm going to talk to it. I'm going to talk to myself. And then I'm going to work through it. I'm going to decide what what place it has in my life. Well, once you do that once and twice and three times, you're like, I know how to do this. So you pull those things out one at a time and you learn the process. Then you can actually pull out five at a time or 10 at a time because you understand the process. You've, You've done it. You've done the hard work with one or two items. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to be able to take everything out and and put it on the curb. It does mean you're still going to have things that are going to go in the to-be-determined pile, and that's okay. But there are really going to be things that need more attention, need more thought, and there are going to be a lot less of those. 
than there would have been. Now, when you do this in the physical, hold on, they want me to go back to children. So what do you do with your children's stuff? Well, you put anything that you think is a child's property in a pile for that child. Okay. You just make a pile, you make a pile, you make a pile, whatever it is. Then you give them, and this, and this is where tough love comes in. You take a picture of the pile. You know, maybe you want to take a picture of, you know, maybe you want to take five pictures where the pile is a little bit spread out or something, you know, give them a sense of what's there, text them the pictures, tell them they have 30 days or else you're just going to get rid of it. Oh my gosh. Some of you fell on the floor. Get up off the floor. Oh my God. Listen, this is, if you feel some kind of way about their stuff, then that's on you. It's not on them. Parents have these, these connections to rockers and clothes and teddy bears and that because that's your child as a child. That represents the memories of your child. It's almost like this is your child. Nine times out of 10, your kids don't want that stuff. They're not connected to it. They might take one thing out of that whole pile. And it's going to break your heart when they say, mom, get rid of it. I don't want it. Now, what are you going to do? What have you already done? I bet you've already done this. Shove it all back in the storage shed. Pull the door down and leave. Because you're not getting rid of that because that's my child. If I get rid of that, I'm basically killing my child. So you see how we don't know what to do with these things. And that's how they end up getting stuck. And then that's how we end up getting stuck in our energy. In some ways, you might take a second and say to yourself, hmm, why do I want to keep these things of my child's and talk it out? Because he was so cute. She was so cute at that time. She always played with this and she always did these drawings. Okay, you can go down memory lane. You sure can. Absolutely. Because you've locked them up into a storage shed, what it what it means is, is that you're trying to keep it sacred. You're trying to keep this stuff safe. You're trying to hold on to the past. What you're trying to do is hold on to the past. And then you then we we shore it up with some kind of common sense like, well, their kids are going to want these things. Their kids are going to want these things. Are you kidding me? Their kids are going to be flying around in, in flying cars and stuff. They're not going to want some Elmo, you know, teddy bear. They're not going to want that. <laughs> That's what we tell ourselves. But what kid wants that? Nobody. I played with my dad's toys for like an hour. <laughs> and that was that. It was like, oh, well, this is boring, right? I mean, these kids are going to be sophisticated. They're going to be using sophisticated things. They're probably going to be, you know, using holograms. They're not going to want Elmo. Okay. Let it go. And understand that if you can't let your kids toys go, here's where we get into the shadow. It also means that you're not willing to let them go. In what areas are you also keeping them on a short leash? Because you don't want to let them go. They're adults yet you're keeping their baby things, that tells me everything I need to know that energetically speaking, you don't want them to be adults. You don't want to let them go to make their own mistakes, to be adults, to be independent. It makes sense. As a parent, you don't want that child to go through the hurts and the tribulations that you went through, but you can't stop them. You cannot stop them. Again, when we first started talking about this, we told you, this is about you. This isn't about your kids. This isn't about your friends or your family, or your siblings, your parents. It's about you. So you know what I'm going to tell you? Grab that Elmo. Grab it. Take it and put it smack dab in the middle of your dining room table and stare at it for a week. You'll get rid of it. It'll it, It'll be in your face. You'll have to deal with it. You'll have to process what the problem is, what the hang up is, what the thinking pattern is. You'll have to process that. And once you process it, you're going to be like, are you sure you don't want this Elmo? 
I'm going to FaceTime you with the Elmo. Here's the Elmo. You sure you don't want this? No, mom. I already told you 20 times I don't want Elmo. I don't want it. You're not letting go. That's another indication that you're not letting go of that child. You're trying to tell that child that you know what's best for them, but they're an adult. So that's how you would work through it with other people's things. Say, and, and it's tough love. It's also boundaries. You told these people, I need this closet cleared out by 30 days from now, whether it's your husband, whatever, whoever, it doesn't matter. In 30 days, it's going to be empty. I'm going to get rid of my stuff. You're going to get rid of your stuff or I'm going to get rid of your stuff. Oh, I know you're arguing with me right now. Are you kidding me? My, my spouse would never let me throw stuff away. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. Does your spouse have a closet? Shove every last piece of that stuff in their closet. I don't care if it doesn't fit. That's your closet. Here's your closet. If you're not going to do that, then you have to create some sort of energetic separation. And this is important. So let's just say you've got stuff of your spouse's or somebody that you cannot, you for whatever reason, you cannot get rid of. Okay. Then what you're going to do is you're going to put those things in a box a container and you're going to label the container and you're going to put the container completely out of the way, not in the closet, in the basement, in the attic. And you're not going to pay extra for it. If anybody's going to pay extra for it to be in storage, it's going to be that person. That's a boundary. That is a boundary. You told people, I'm not doing this anymore. If you want to store it, you store it. Why do this? Why make everybody mad? <laughs> Why blow up my household, Susan? Well, because this stuff is holding you back. It's holding you back. And your soul is like, I don't want to be held back. I want to expand. I want to grow. I want to experience new things. And I can't fit any more new things in here because all the old stuff is dragging me down. And at some point, if you're if if you're not dealing with this, spirit will deal with it for you. I've, I've experienced it. I'm pretty sure you've experienced it. When you have the leaky pipe that explodes and ruins everything in that closet, all those pictures are gone. The flood that happens, the fire that happens, any number of things that happen. If you don't deal with this, Spirit will help you because by not dealing with it, it's an energetic way of saying, I'm never going to deal with this. I'm going to go to my grave with this little stuffed animal. Okay. That is intractable. When you're intractable, spirit says, oh, look, Susan is stuck. Let's pry her out of this stuck position by taking away the problem that's making her stuck. She needs help. The stuff that's keeping us stuck is emotional. Emotional baggage, fears, broken dreams, broken relationships. But it's manifested in the physical in these ways. And spirit will help you by removing the physical. Which, I might add, does not help you it, it, it helps you deal with the loss of those things, maybe, but it doesn't always help you deal with the reason why you were holding them all to begin with. And therefore, you missed an opportunity to deal with why you were holding all these things to begin with, which means you get to the other side and you're like, gosh, darn it. I want to do that again. Can I have another chance at this? I know I can do better. Again, we don't want that. And cleaning up your side of the fence, everybody else is over there. Kids, everybody's on the other side of the fence. They all have their fences. Cleaning up our side of the fence is leading by example. Then those kids, then those people can see, wow, wow, you're different. You look different. You feel, your energy feels different. You look happier. You look really good. What are you doing, mom? What are you doing? 
Oh, I cleaned out the junk drawer. What? You know, what, what are you talking about? Yeah, I cleaned out. I cleaned out the closet. Remember when I told you that you need to come get that jersey? Well, I donated it. You didn't come get it. I, I cleaned out the closet. I, I cleaned things out. I'm just feeling lighter. I'm feeling brighter. I'm feeling more expansive. That's how, if you want to help your kids, lead by example. Don't tell them what they should be doing. You do what you should be doing. And then they're going to notice it. And they're going to notice it because they're going to see the positive effects in real time, in real reality. You could tell somebody how to fix something, how to do something. But when you show them with your own life, it's a lesson they'll never forget. And it's a beautiful gift to your own psyche. It's a beautiful gift to your own soul. So I hope this has been helpful. This is really shadow work 101. This is how to get in there. And, and this is going to pay dividends in your spiritual hygiene, in your spiritual protection, in your spiritual ascension. It's going to pay dividends because if you don't have something in the closet that you're ignoring, that makes you a target, it makes you vulnerable for energies because you're not looking, that's where they come from is the area you're not looking at. And that area is always grief, anger, sadness, disappointment. Not going to look at that. Well, while you're not looking at it, every Tom, Dick, and Harry energy is coming in through that broken dream junk drawer and, and has carte blanche to your energy. So we're going to say... We're claiming all of our energy. We're claiming everything. I'm claiming all of my energy. The good, the bad, the ugly, the broken, the disappointed, the grief, the sadness. I'm claiming it all. It's all me. It's what makes me, me. And I'm going to be comp compassionate and loving and accepting for all of those pieces. Now I'm spiritually bulletproof. I'm spiritually bulletproof because I've owned my own darkness. I've owned my own shadow. I've talked about my own insecurities, my own pettiness, my own um, ego, whatever it is. Okay, I'm being honest with myself. I'm not being negative, I'm not being critical. I'm being loving. I'm being loving. I'm transforming all of that energy into love for me. Come home. I'm home. It's safe. I own all this. Nobody can use it against me. I've already worked through it. I've already brought it into my heart. I've transformed it to light. And I love it. I understand I'm not perfect. No one is perfect. So it's not going to matter to me if you point out that I'm not perfect. It's not going to matter to me if you push on that wound. If you try to flip my trigger, whether you're a physical person or a non-physical energy, because I already know the trigger's there. I've already flipped it myself. And I've healed it. I've accepted it. I've brought it home and I've loved it. So now you also have this sense of calm and balance that whatever life throws at you, you're going to be able to navigate it much easier, much easier because you faced all the demons in your closet. You brought them home. You healed them. You integrated them. Now when things get dicey or complicated you could deal with it you're like yeah this is this is a not so great situation not enjoying it but i can meet it head on because i know how to do that now i know how to do that now 
I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to lock it away. I don't have to not react or overreact. I can just be here in the energy and let it go right past me because I don't need that lesson. I experienced whatever it was that happened, but I, I released it because I don't need that lesson anymore. That's the beauty of doing this work. Take really, really good care of yourself. Let me know in the comments what you think. I always love to read your comments. I'm pretty active in the comments. And uh, I wish you all the best, okay? Take really, really good care of yourselves.